Steve Plach, and I'll be your host for this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, we're delighted to be back uh, with Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, this show is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television, and uh, each month we highlight a nonprofit in our community that's doing great, great work, and we're absolutely delighted, as I say, to have the friends of the Santa Cruz Public Library here and welcoming Erica Anderson. Erica, welcome. And Steve Mead, welcome. And a friend to his right, R2D2. <laughs> there you go. Um, you know, I was saying, uh, uh, as we were discussing kind of the library in, in general, that I am a daily library patron. I love the library. Um, I love the fact that I use audiobooks as kind of my late night uh, entertainment. But more than that, they provide such a range of wonderful programs. And I think it's uh, attributable, it reflects the hard work of the library staff, but also the people who are the volunteers. And your nonprofit, the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Libraries, does a lot to maintain a lot of those programs. And hopefully we'll get a chance to kind of discuss some of those as we go along and give people a really better idea of, of the range really of, of services and great works that are being done by not only your group but the people who, who, who actually uh, staff the library itself. Um, Erica, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the Friends. Yeah, so I'm new with the Friends. I'm the campaign manager ah, and okay. yeah, so for the buildings campaign we got this Measure S money <laughs> and we are creating beautiful new 21st century libraries, slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> so the Friends were started in 1979 oh my. and yeah, since then um, multiple Friends groups have formed throughout the county mm -hmm. and we raise funds for the library from La Silva Beach all the way to Boulder Creek. Right. So all 10 libraries branches. That's terrific and uh, also discussing uh, a few years back when there was uh, a problem with funding with the library and had going to city council and really not only requesting but demanding that they not reduce you know, the hours in the library, they mm -hmm. not close uh, the smaller branches like La Selva and Garfield yeah. Park, which is my you know, home library, my little annex, <laughs> I just love it. Uh, and we're delighted that, uh, that that didn't happen, that the library now is, is robust and really moving forward. And we wanted to mention right at the top of the program that uh, the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Library is a nonprofit, and you do accept donations. Yes, so we people do. who want to, you know, throw a few dollars to people doing really great work, uh, we have uh, as a runner that uh, that website, and you'll be able to kind of get on there and figure out how you can donate. Uh, and so it's a really great thing to do if uh, you're so inclined. Steve Mead, welcome, Steve. Thank uh, you. Uh, you are, as I understand it, uh, uh, the uh, the Creator, the the producer of the Steam program. Well, not all of them, just okay, the, like a, right. a portion of them. I, I work with the Lego Robotics and oh, the okay. the wow. Robo Sumos and the Robo Beginnings uh -huh. in the Valleys. Yeah. And uh, well, how did you get involved with uh, with that and with the friends? <laughs> Well, that's a the, the funny story. Is a friend of mine. We love funny stories. So. <laughs> was she's uh, um, retired and she was looking to do some donating of uh, her time to the libraries, and she was talking about the cleaning the shelves and dusting. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking on the computer for her, and I saw that they had um, Lego programs. And so I thought, well, you know, I I like to play with Legos, and <laughs> so I signed up myself too, and and. Four years later, I'm still with them, and My goodness. we're putting together all new programs and, yeah. and running forward to the future. Mm -hmm. Well, Erica, tell us uh, if somebody were interested in uh, volunteering with the Friends, they want to get involved with the program, they're going to be listening to some of the great uh, uh, programs and, and projects that you do offer and do you know maintain, how would they do that? Yeah, so the Friends have a really strong volunteer force. We mm -hmm. provide nearly 8,000 volunteer no out kidding. Yeah, wow. annually, system-wide uh -huh. at all the library branches. Mm -hmm. And if you go to www.fscpl.org, okay. yeah. you can find our volunteer opportunities there. Great, great. Uh, to get involved, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we were mentioning, of course, uh, when you talk to uh, our, our producers and our, our folks here at uh, Community Television, that this is an evergreen program, so it'll be shown uh, several times during the year. Uh, but as we we're discussing it now in December, uh, this is the 150th anniversary of the library mm -hmm. system, the yeah. sesquicentennial. Congratulations, you know, to none of us, of course, are old enough <laughs> to have been around in the beginning, but uh, we can appreciate uh, the history of it. But uh, tell us a little bit about 
uh, program that you have now and you hope will continue into next year and so it'll be worthwhile talking about uh, while this program is played over and over again is the giving program, the Santa Cruz Gives. Yeah, so we're lucky enough to be a part of Santa Cruz Gives this year and uh, we're raising funds for the STEAM programs which oh. Steve will talk about a little bit more. Please, yeah. But um, yeah, the robotics classes, the coding classes, all these classes that um, family members in the community can pay to be a part of mm -hmm. through different organizations are offered for free at your local library. Wow. And people like Steve volunteer and teach these kids how to do these great programs. And um, through Santa Cruz Gives, you can go to the website and give through there. We oh, actually okay. have a challenge grant. So mm -hmm. every gift of $5 or more is matched up to $5,000. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, we actually are currently in the lead Oh, good. For, uh, well, <laughs> well, we're hoping that, and, and I know that we were discussing uh, that uh, you currently have uh, some grants or proposals, so you'll be able to kind of extend this program for the next year. Yeah. But I do think it's such a valuable program, such a wonderful thing to do, that it really deserves you know, being at least talked about and recognized. And thank you for all that great work, and the people who benefit from that uh, are very appreciative, and our community is as well. Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. You know, how you, uh, what qualifies you to <laughs> pat your arm around R2D2? Uh, over here and, and teach kids how to do robotics and coding and that kind of thing. Well, my my background is restaurant management. Oh, believe perfect. It or not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I did that, and then you know I was I do Lego creations, and mm -hmm. I I show them at different events and different comic cons, and so that's what when I saw that the library does Lego programs, I said, well, I think I might be able, I might be, you know qualified to teach something and then you know mm -hmm. after talking with a couple of the librarians and ran into a, a great librarian Laura she uh, she let me run with with their Lego programs mm -hmm. and with the developing the steam programs through the Lego robotics mm -hmm. and that you know and in and, and that way is the steam an acronym for something uh, science technology engineering math beautiful Beautiful. Arts. And arts, well, it's yeah. STEAM, yes, and then STEM <laughs> yeah. is the one. And I'll just mention that uh, if anybody has been, I, I'm presuming that uh, those wonderful Lego creations that I see mm -hmm. at the library, they're just unbelievably f oh, fascinating. Thank I you. mean, <laughs> it's it, it just incredible. If, if you think, well, Legos are building something, you see, think you've seen a movie, or you mm -hmm. think you just put these plastic pieces together, go and see one of these exhibitions. And we have some of uh, the, the pictures here. Maybe you could uh, give us a little bit of an idea of what these folks are doing here, because they are just fascinating and certain extremely intricate right there we're building one of the challenges like at Garfield Park there was we would build suspension bridges and stack books on them oh to my. see which bridge design held the most weight I'll be books. and other ones are like um, we do catapults mm -hmm. we do trebuchets yeah um, we have rubber band cars like here is one of the robotics classes. So, and the robotics class, this one is offered at uh, was it's offered at Boulder Creek right now, or at uh, Scotts Valley right now. It's mm -hmm. Robo X Games, and next uh, January, the end of January, we're going to be doing the Robo Sumo up in Boulder Creek. Oh, wonderful! And then Robo Basics in yeah. Scotts Valley, and so there's another picture of the Robo Sumo. That's at the end of the competition where the kids are. The, everybody throws a robot on the mat to as one last go around of hoopla uh -huh. and so yeah it gets quite loud if you can imagine the kids cheering and yeah, yeah. we have at the last robo sumo we had about 30 parents there really even <laughs> up at, it was in boulder creek and the mm -hmm. librarians and everybody even came yeah. into the room and for that short couple hours of the meeting of the competition mm -hmm. that the place was just yeah. centralized right around the kids. So now you're having something in January which uh, uh, will be timely for uh, this program. Certainly it'll be played uh, perhaps sometime in the month of December but certainly in January. Mm -hmm. Tell us what somebody can expect for a Robo Sumo uh, program in, in January. Okay. Well the Robo Sumo is a advanced class on the Lego Robotics where there's 20, we're going to bring it up to 22 teams because we have such a waiting period for the kids. Mm -hmm is we're going to bump it up to 22 teams, or 22 kids, where it'll be 11 teams. The kids get paired off into teams. Right. And that's part of the STEAM program, is they have to learn to work together. They have to overcome issues together. Uh -huh. 
and we're not allowed to help. We can give them advice, <laughs> we could give them, but we have to allow them to fail, to uh -huh. learn, to, okay. to get the strive yeah. to overcome it. Of course. And so they have to build a robot, they have to design it, mm -hmm. they have to practice with it, and then on the day of the competition, it's a double elimination, brackets, mm -hmm. and they have to compete against the other robots right. to whether knock them out of the ring or disable the robot in some way. But we don't do projectiles and okay, stuff like well, that. Okay, well, it's good it's, to know. It's, you know, f friendly. And so it's double elimination. So it's, that's how the kids learn to, to build and to, to give the, comp the mm -hmm. competitive edge of it. Right. And certainly, I guess they're they're learning some uh, some engineering skills along the yes, way. Yes, yes, yeah. they have. I mean, because there's restraints. There's the size of the robot has to fit within a box. Mm -hmm. It has to be under a certain weight. So they have to design. They have to build. It's an eight week program now, mm -hmm. and so in that time they have to you know, and then they have to program it to do what they want. Because mm -hmm. to get it on the mat is one yeah. thing, but yeah. to get it to compete against the other robots. Yeah. They have to actually program it because the robots won't do anything unless they program yeah. it. And part of your qualifications, I'm guessing, to be able to do this is when we're seeing our good friend <laughs> R2D2 here. Yeah. You were saying that this is 99% accurate. Or? Yeah, it's 99% accurate. It's uh, <laughs> it was built off the blueprints through the astromech.net. It's a group f f for the Star Wars fans and uh -huh. where we yeah. trade and everything. And um, he was actually a secondary design, or a, not design, but thought to bring more interest into the kids to bring them into the STEAM program. Interesting, yeah. And so it was, he's helps uh, give them a visualization of what they're learning in the LEGO programs mm -hmm. and in the yeah. STEAM programs. Yeah. It's because everything they learn actually goes into building the R2. Right. Now, is there some uh, some programming or coding that's involved with this as well? It's JavaScript, saying? yes. Okay. And so, so now, is that something that the kids are learning when they're... The kids are learning. Program? There's that's, that's fascinating. There's actually several different uh, layers to it. The library has what's known as um, the uh, uh, Code Combat, which is more of an advanced level. Mm -hmm. Um, what we teach at the robotics is a basic, more of a basic program through JavaScript. It's a word recognition and a picture. So the kids, we teach the class from anywhere from five to 15, Right. is they see a picture of like a gear and they drop it down into the block for the programming, but now they have to change the parameters, they have to change the speeds, they have to change. And so it gets quite and quite uh, amazing to see the kids doing the programming yeah. Yeah. and then to get the word recognition going up into code combat like it's some yeah. of the other branches to where wait a minute i know what a loop is or i know what the the uh, ultrasonic sensors for yeah. to to measure the distances and yeah. and so well for somebody's uh, level of uh, technological expertise is uh, flipping the light switch on and still marveling the fact that the light <laughs> comes on yeah uh, i think this is just tremendous you know and, and i know that uh, are now are the volunteers that you have eric are they involved in this as well with steve how do you how do you guys work together <clears throat> Not so much. Well, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm a volunteer okay. of the, the library system. Um, this was kind of a, um, some of the librarians gave me a challenge to <coughs> come up with a program, you know, that, um, like we were doing the drop-in programs for the Legos with the tr trebuchets and the catapults. And um, one of the librarians, Laura, she said, well, what do you know about computers? and teaching programming. Mm -hmm. and I said, well, I, not much. I can, you know, I can hold my own. <coughs> and she goes, well, how quick can you put together a program? Oh, really? And I was like, um, well, she goes, can you do it in about two months? <laughs> and that was the birth of the RoboSumo. And this was how long ago? Are we going back? Um, uh, like three years now. Okay. Wow. And so we've had, we've, the, we've had quite a few champions. We have some champions that are two-time champions now. But the, the whole setup was to go around to as many of the branches as we can to get champions from each branch mm -hmm. and then to come together at the end of the, the session yeah. with every all the champions from the different branches to have like a grand champion battle. And so Are there are there's uh, different age groups? It's just, uh, what's the age range? The kids what's do? the, it's more of 
the ability of the children. The, oh, the really? library puts it at seven to 17, mm -hmm. but we've also had a team of five-year-olds come in second place. Is that right? Yes. That's and amazing. so wow. <laughs> it was quite an amusement. We've I also had say. you know kids that sit in the class who don't look like they're doing anything because mm -hmm. it's you know they, they have lessons to do throughout yeah. the class. But the day of the competitions, like one little gentleman, he came in second place. He built his robot and programmed it the day of the competition mm -hmm. and came in second. And so, yeah, yeah. it's, so we've kind of opened up because there's some uh, kids that are very mechanical mm -hmm. and that's what it takes to do it. And there's some that are 12 year olds that, that are not mechanically. So right. they would go back to like the robo beginnings mm -hmm. where they learn how to build the robots. They learn how to do the basic programming because right. the advanced ones like the Robo X games and the Sumo, mm -hmm. they're the advanced. They're not allowed to use any of the learning software. Oh, they have to take right. what they've already learned in the Robo Beginnings and what they say they've learned at home because we'll take, if they don't take Robo Beginnings, but they, oh, I've got one at home, I can do it. So we let them in, and yeah. throw them you know, into the fire and see how they do. And it's actually quite, quite competitive for it. Yeah, so. it's, it's really wonderful to me uh, that these programs uh, engage youth in not only robotics and, and uh, computer sciences and that kind of thing, but it involves in the library system as well. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking earlier about uh, when I go to the library, uh, I'm, yeah, I also go to downtown library as well as Garfield Park, my, my home library there. But uh, the, it's kind of uh, maybe 35 to 65. It's an older mm. group, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and also, although I'm not, necessarily aware of the you know, the young people's chill programs that are going on that the the interest in having young people you know make that robust you know library system mm -hmm. continue to grow as you were saying yeah. yeah and that's what i was going to add to what steve's saying is that the friends are involved more in the fundraising and advocacy mm -hmm. and making these library programs happen right. or providing more <laughs> tools for these yeah. programs to happen, mm -hmm. which is what they're in need of, right? Is that yes, we're is the, is the, on wait lists. Yeah, and like, you know, to, to help with the wait list is like the friends are helping raise funds for more computers, mm -hmm. more more um, uh, the robotics pieces. Right. And so, because it, it's nice to have a waiting list, right. you, know, you know that you're in demand, but it's mm -hmm. also a downer for the kids that can't get right. into yeah. the programs. Mm -hmm. And so the more we can, you know, the more funds we can raise through the right. friends, of course, the more we're able to reach out to the community and get more kids in yeah. to the programs. Right. And again, uh, uh, we have the website up and you can contribute uh, through a few dollars toward this, these great, great programs. Uh, it's just phenomenal to, I would be interested uh, at some point to try to track, you know, some of the kids and see if they took up careers in robotics or mm -hmm. careers in computer sciences, you know, and said, you yeah. know, I started out at the Boulder Creek Library <laughs> with Steve mm -hmm. Mead, you know, and R2-D2, and now they're creating, you know, the you know, cutting edge of robotics yeah. and, and computer science, things like that. And mm -hmm. a lot of the kids express that they want to create video games or yes. be computer programmers when they grow up, mm -hmm. and I recently visited the Scotts Valley branch for the <laughs> Robo X games, yeah. and it was amazing. I had never seen anything like it. It was uh -huh. so, I was so impressed with how smart these kids were because mm -hmm. I'm looking at what they're doing on the computer, mm -hmm. and I think that I know yeah. enough about computers yeah. and what they were doing. I was just blown away that they could one learn that for free right. and that they were like 10 years old mm -hmm. and doing this stuff. Yeah, they were doing. Gondolas at that time. Yeah, building and practicing with making gondolas. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. thing that was most impressive to me was there was a couple of kids who knew how to read music, and they were dead <laughs> set on programming music into the computer brain to be able to play a winning song type of thing as their robot moved. As like mm -hmm. we are the champions or something. Yeah. So yeah. they had to do, <laughs> but they had to program note by note. Yeah, it's note by note into yeah, it. Right. Yeah, it was you, it's not saying, oh, here, download this music. No, it's, they have to program the note, mm -hmm. the tone, the duration. Yeah. Then the next one. So one of the teammates was doing the song, and the other one was program writing the program for the functionality. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah, it's impressive what they can do. Yeah, it's always uh, gratifying to me. Um, I, I took some courses at UCSC back in the day for uh, early childhood education, and, and my teacher trainings was with uh, th uh, third graders, eight-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And I was in the science fair. 
and I went and I expected to see the, the you know, whipped cream volcano or something <laughs> like that, or soil erosion, and they were so sophisticated, you mm -hmm. know, and so smart, I was just amazed how precocious these young people were. Yeah. And it's always wonderful to me to see, you know, the, 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 the kind of brain trust and the mm -hmm. kind of, you know, enthusiasm the young people have that they're going to be in the future. And that's the one th thing that I think the library does, uh, as well as any aspect of our community is really encourage that give them people you know, young people a place to grow and to thrive and to learn and, yeah. and uh, to the extent the friends of the, of the Santa Cruz Public Library System uh, libraries and Steve you know your program that's what we need to have happen mm -hmm. so if again if you're thinking about throwing them a couple of dollars this is one of the reasons why yeah. you want to do that you know one of these kids could be the next Steve Jobs of the future yeah. I mean you know yeah. it could be and mm -hmm. you know there, we, we have several of the programs where we're getting more girls now into the programs because oh. we have the X Games, mm -hmm. and so it's not as um, uh, violent as the Robo Sumo, <laughs> the, and so that's where the gondolas and stuff like that. Uh -huh. We have very, you know, the girls coming into the programs are very competitive. Even yeah. with the boys, is you know that oh, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm getting him. I'm not gonna let him. You know, he may be a little faster, but yeah. I'm gonna make mine. And so that's one of the like with the programs with the music mm -hmm. is, you know, we had. One team of girls who, there was two girls. They paired each other up as you know part of the program is, and they were dead set on that they were going to beat all the boys, but not by beating them. They were going to smash them. <laughs> they were really going to go after them, and so that's where you know the competitive of it. And you know, we're also talking about um, you know the growth of the library system. We're talking about uh, you know the broken ground in Felton, the broken ground in Capitola, and you folks are are working uh, with them as well. But that's going to provide some extra space. We're hoping for these programs not only continue but thrive. Yeah, definitely, and that's a big goal of all of the Friends chapters. There's multiple Friends chapters throughout the county, and providing these diverse and thriving library programs that are free in a very expensive community. So there are, there are, there are several, uh, certainly affiliated, but different uh, friends, chapters or groups? Yeah, or? we're all related. They oh, all yeah. fall <laughs> under <laughs> our nonprofit organization of the Friends, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's different uh, Friends chapters throughout the county. Yeah. And um, they, we do Lots of different fundraising events as well. Mm -hmm. There's um, our community reads and Aptos. We've got a bookstore at the downtown Santa Cruz Library, a bookstore at the Capitola Mall. Yeah, I so. was saying, uh, again, we had such an interesting conversation. It's too bad you couldn't have tuned in 10 minutes before the show started. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that in the outtakes. Um, <laughs> but uh, a friend, uh, one of our friends here, uh, at, uh, in fact, working in the booth today, Karen Scott, works at that uh, book uh, shop uh, there in Capitola Mall. Yeah. And it's in a great location right next to Starbucks. So how often is that, do you? I, the hours are listed on our website. Good. Okay. Yeah. But make sure that you know if you want to go in and help the friends, and that does help directly yes. the friends. So yes. uh, they have a whole room full of books. You know, so you can go in, and you can browse, you can buy some books. You see Karen Scott, our good friend. But mm -hmm. those are wonderful things to do to kind of for the community to engage. You know, it's, yeah. I, I think everybody loves the library. I was telling you that uh, we were fortunate enough on one of our previous nonprofit spotlights to have uh, Susan Nimitz and Janice O'Driscoll here and talk about the library. Yeah. Generally, wonderful people. Uh, it was not too long after um, Susan had come in from Minnesota, but just talking about the library system itself. You know, and, wh and what a what a community you know gem it is for everybody to participate in, to engage in, to realize you know how important it can be, you know, throughout, you know, the, the, your whole life, you know, from yeah. the cradle to the grave, basically. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of great stuff going on at the libraries that, I mean, even, I've lived here forever and a day, but, <laughs> in Santa Cruz, but the, the stuff that's going on in the libraries nowadays is not just, you know, the books and the, the, the rulers across the fingers to be <laughs> quiet. It's right. the outreach, it's the, um, like the Veterans Center downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, all, you know, all the programs, the yeah. different programs that are yeah. going on to bring in the community, to bring in the young kids who are the future yeah. of the, the libraries. And I think I'm, I'm as equally impressed, uh, having been, uh, I, I haven't lived in Santa Cruz for a long period of time, but uh, as, as a houseless advocate here for some years. Uh, the work that Miley Freedom Agru did down there with the outreach for the, you know, for the homeless yeah. folks and really bringing them in mm -hmm. to the library, into the yeah. community. And it's not, you know, your, your, your grandfather's library anymore. 
You yeah. know, it's not the library that they established 150 years ago. Now it's a modern, you know, the growing, organic, you know, you know, improving library system a, 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 all the time, day after day after mm -hmm. day. Yeah, you, exactly. you still have your nooks where in the libraries that, like, with the newer ones that are being built, they have designated areas for like the teen centers and the the younger kids, and then they have mm -hmm. do have the comfy chairs to where right. you can go mm -hmm. and sit and read a yeah. good book. Live Oak Library is a perfect example of that. Yeah. You know, and I was living in that area when that was built, but they had a wonderful children's section. But mm -hmm. a wonderful, as you say, an area where you can say, sit in a comfy chair yeah. and read your periodical or just read the newspaper mm -hmm. or something like that. So they're providing an opportunity for everybody to come and enjoy it. But I do really uh, appreciate and, and am fascinated by the learning aspect of it. Yeah. You know, and that seems to be you know, something that's really being emphasized now and wonderful to have you here and, and talk about that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was at the Live Oak branch recently mm -hmm. and was checking out the code combat class. So in the back of the library in the kids area, there was um, a couple kids learning how to code through a video game That's called Code Combat. That's amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there with a librarian yeah. and then yeah. a couple seats away, there was a couple of different um, kids probably ranging from eight to 17 that had obviously come there after school and they were mm -hmm. getting homework help from volunteers yeah. and then on the other end of the library people picking out books and people sitting comfortably and reading mm -hmm. and I think that does speak to what you're saying yeah. that the library mm -hmm. should be a community center it should have all of these free right. resources it should be 21st century and yeah. providing these yeah. things where we can learn how to code at the library right. we don't have to pay expensive programs to learn how to do yeah. that there, there's another program that's through a different as through a different department in Santa Cruz is with the, like the robotics. It's several hundred dollars per child for those kids to go into mm -hmm, those programs. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, at the library, we do it for free. Yeah. And so, and that's where the donations and the friends come into play yeah. is, you know, that still has to be paid for somehow, yep. and it's not through tax money. Yeah. It's yeah. through donations and it's through yeah. fundraising. Well, we're down to our last minute, believe it or not. I wish we had wow. more time, but uh, <laughs> Steve Mead, thank you. Uh, STEAM program just sounds wonderful. I'm just uh, fascinated by, you know, the work that you're doing <laughs> and, you. uh, and coding. I'm going, holy cow. You know, You'll have to come wonderful. see the robotics. I will come see the robotics, absolutely. <laughs> I say, as I say, I've seen the Lego uh, things that have been uh, generated and built by, by kids and people like that. Mm -hmm. It's just fascinating. You know. yeah. And so, Steve Mead, thank you so much for being here. R2-D2, may the force <laughs> be with you, my brother. Uh, Erica, thank you for all of your great thank work you. with the friends. I know that you work hard and long uh, to make this uh, happen and make our library system even more dynamic You know, every day. So thank you for being here, and thank you for all that great work. And again, uh, if you really want to uh, help out and you enjoy and appreciate what you've heard here today, which we all do, uh, Give them a few dollars and, and let's help uh, keep these programs not only uh, uh, survive but thrive, and I think that's important. So, Erica, yeah. thank you so much. Thank Steve, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I've been Steve Plates. This has been uh, this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Tune in next month when we're going to highlight another nonprofit doing great work in our community. Maybe not as great as these folks here, but still <laughs> they'll be doing good work and uh, we'll be talking about that. So, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time and uh, take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us.